Welcome back to another thematic list build. I wanted to take a break from the power armored boys that are oh so favored, and so this time I'm going for a skewy green skin list. Though, unlike the previous orc thematic list builds, this one is not tied to any orc clan in particular. This is a Grot Revolution. It's a thematic list build for Grot Supremacy. With the Orcs Codex yet to arrive, we only have their Index Detachment, the Wa Tribe. Like many of the Index Detachments, it's evocative of the poster boys of the Orcs range, the Goths. Wa Tribe provides a fairly archetypal toolkit for the Orcs, giving them sustained hits 1 in melee. For the list I have in mind, the synergy Wa Tribe provides isn't ideal, but it's not the worst either. On that note, Regarding the thematic objectives of the list, they are Grots. To build a list that flexes Gretchen, or rather, Grot units. Now, let's head over to the list breakdown. While detachment formations were lost with 9th edition, this list is structured to evoke a battalion. There is just a certain purity an army gains from adhering to an initial core of troops or battle line units. And you guys know how I roll. I just wanna be pure. To serve as the troops of our battalion is three units of Gretchen. Each unit is taken at their maximum size, granting 20 wounds of toughness to Grotz and 4 wounds of toughness 5 runt herders per unit. On top of that, their big get is their ability Thieving Scavengers, which grants you an attempt to gain a command point on a 4-up for each objective within range of a Gretchen unit in your command phase. One of those Gretchen units will be led by Zodgrod Wartsnaga. He brings two abilities to the table. Superunts gives the Scout's 9 ability, which is good, as it will give his unit of Grotz the means to mitigate enemy infiltrate and scout moves. A plus 1 to hit and wound, which is meh, since Grotz fight like Grotz, but it's still better to have it than not, though Zodgrod himself can make pretty good use of it as well. And each time an enemy attack targets that unit, it must subtract one from the wound roll, which is of course good. His second ability is Special Dose, which increases the move characteristic of models in his unit by 6 inches when you activate a WA, which I'd rate very highly making what would ordinarily be a unit which could move 6 to 12 inches when advancing 12 to 18 inches, and that is before that 9 inch scout move. This is where the heavy lifting units come in, and for a Grot army, it's not a job for muscly greenskins, it's a job for ramshackle constructs. Starting with 3 units of killer cans, each containing 6 models. Each can is fitted with a rocket launcher, giving each squad a threatening 6 D3 shots, each benefiting from Blast, at Strength 9, AP 2, 3 damage. This is bolstered by the Kill a Can ability, Shooty Power Trip, which can allow those rockets to ignore cover on a 2-up. But on a 1, the nearest other friendly unit within 12 inches suffers D3 mortal wounds. And Kill a Cans aren't that bad in melee either. They operate similarly, 3 attacks per can, at Strength 8, AP 2, 3 damage. Now with our first wave of war machines marching into the enemy's lines, let's add in some ranged support. Naturally, with a couple squadrons of Grot tanks, specifically two units of four. Grot tanks are very cool. Who doesn't love a tiny tank? And like with the Killicans, each model is equipped with a rocket launcher. Their unique ability is Scatter, allowing a once per turn out of phase move when an enemy unit ends a move activation within nine inches of a Grot tank unit. It's a versatile ability, potentially denying an enemy unit trying to charge them or opening up the possibility to gain movement, which in this case is especially awesome, as other units with this style of ability, such as Tyranid Termagant and Eldar Rangers, move d6 inches instead of flat 6. Following that up are two more Grot tanks, but this time of the Mega variety. These larger tanks have a fairly standard vehicle profile, toughness 9, 12 wounds with a 3 up armor save but their resiliency is boosted by their unique ability, Bizarrely Resilient, which subtracts the AP of incoming attacks by one. Offensively, the Mega Tank is armed with a twin rocket launcher, which is like a normal rocket launcher, 
but with Twin Linked. Ugh. Which is another ability which poorly abstracts the narrative at play. If you haven't seen my rocket launcher video, go check it out. But this isn't a critique video, so let's move on. In addition, the Mega Tank has Mega Tank Weapons, which is an anti-infantry array-style ranged weapon. At this point, there are quite a lot of vehicles in this list, and to support them are three units of mechs. Mechs have the typical ability combo possessed by many engineer-type characters. Repair D3 wounds to a vehicle in your command phase, and gain lone operative while near a friendly vehicle unit, which is sure to help the many war machines in this list do work. As far as their own output is concerned, each mech has a custom Mega Slugga, a swingy but deadly ranged weapon. And for their melee weapons, I've opted for the Kill Saw rather than the Wrench to give them a little more punch. Hobby tip. If you're keen to minimize the amount of non-Grot units, you can consider a tasteful proxy. This model here is from a Grot General in my local playgroup. It's a model from Mantic Games, the Marauder Gruntbot, which certainly scores bonus points for having an articulating helmet. And hanging out in the backfield is a single unit of three mech guns. As for what they are equipped with, well, there are many choices. But the obvious answer is the ridiculously named Bubble Chucka. It's a multi-profile weapon in which the profile used is randomly determined. But don't worry, no matter what the result, you're always firing a bubble of some sort. And I've saved the best for last. Leading the unit of mech guns is the warlord of this list. A big mech, naturally, with a shock attack gun. Which, like many of the creative orc weapons out there, is as deadly as it is swingy. And he's got two abilities. Deranged Snotling Assault will force targets hit by the shock attack gun to take a battle shock test, which could come in handy. And Mordaka will allow all models in his unit to reroll hit rolls of one. He's been given the enhancement, follow me lads, to help make his mech guns more maneuverable. Another hobby tip here. For those inclined to make the list as pure as possible, you can consider Ramshacklin a shock attack construct for a cunning Grot who fancies himself a Big Mac. Pictured here is an example kitbashed from various GW kits. And at 2,000 points, that's the list. It's 266 wounds across 102 models, and despite it being a Grot list, it's quite tough, with the majority of models being above Toughness 5 with multiple wounds. And boy oh boy does it certainly bring the DACA, packing 28 rockets across the many contraptions in the list. And if you thought that's already a gross amount of shooting, just wait until the Orcs Codex brings an inevitable Bad Moon style detachment. Because we all know, the more DACA you have, the better. Well, that's a wrap on this one. If you enjoyed this video, there are buttons for liking, sharing, and subscribing. Thanks for watching! And a special thanks to Julius Maximus, as well as my other generous patrons and channel members. There are certainly more ways to go about creating thematic list builds, and so I invite you to share yours in the comments, and comment below with what factions you would like to see for future thematic list builds. Anyways, thanks again for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.